Laura Yorkin is the Health and Safety Officer at the Town of Innisfil in Ontario. She says that joint health and safety committees are effective when included during organizational change. I met up with Laura at this year's Partners in Prevention Conference in Mississauga, Ontario to discuss how companies can create committees that are consulted throughout all aspects of business. Whether you are in production and manufacturing or whether, like myself, I'm in a municipality, it's what is the customer demands or needs. And to that, it's are you understanding, are there trucks that need to be serviced and are those new pieces of equipment or new processes, are they being reviewed at for the safety risks of the employees? And how do we ensure their safety? It's a win-win for the corporation because of the fact that it ensures productivity and ensures that it, the employees, who are the most important asset, are considered um, at all points of the phase, at the beginning, at the middle, and at the end. Laura says there are ways to tell if your joint health and safety committee is ineffective. Lack of participation in committees, meetings that are not existent or they don't happen, meetings where there is no substance to it, it's nothing more than a coffee or a tea party, and the other is when there's political agendas attached to the joint health and safety committees. Those are the ones that you want to steer away from and to that you need to be very structured and that starts with the people that are on the committee. Do they have commitment? Do they have motivation? And do they have a leadership that will support them in their initiatives to make that culture shift of safety for the organization? Organizational leaders play an important role in creating a good Joint Health and Safety Committee. The Joint Health and Safety Committee has to operate as a separate entity. They are the auditors, they're the internal checks and balances to make sure that as leaders, you know that you've got your company policy that says I have policies and procedures and I have um, equipment that's been purchased in accordance with standards and regulations, I've trained employees and I've hired competent supervisors. But who's checking that? Who's balancing that? And for the leaders, they want the joint health and safety and so they need to empower that committee to do their task. And my greatest thing that I think is, is the fact that have a regular check-in with them and let them know, hey, what are you working on? How are things going? And what is it that they need from them as the executive. Laura says there are best practices committees should implement. The guideline for joint health and safety committees, it has some really good tips and tricks um, in there. The other is have structure to it and make it fun, make it different, make it exciting. One of the things that we did at the joint health and safety committee of the town of Innisfil is we started a barbecue. Because staff didn't know who we were, we put our pictures up on the bulletin board with funny pictures. And it was like we all got orange t-shirts so that when we were out, people could associate, oh, ah, I know who that is.